Hi everybody, today we are going to do a brief demonstration on plate uh, cutting, which is also known as Picassiette. My name is Karen Silton. I am a mosaic artist. I work in a lot of different mediums of glass and tile and um, fused glass, ceramic tile, um, very expensive glass materials, and then also thrift store type things like, like these plates, which actually look almost too nice to, to break. It's kind of sad, but um, we're going to do just like a simple demonstration. I get asked by my students all the time how to cut plates. Um, now, outside of just taking the plate and tossing it against the wall and just shattering it, which some people like to think about doing, there is another way of doing it which um, will give you a little more control and probably um, not create a lot of drama and chaos in your house as well. Um, I will show you just an example of a piece that I've done that's, you know, this is not really a very fine art type of process, but uh, I have a variety of different pots uh, in my patio that utilize broken uh, or cut plates. And uh, the main thing is that you can't use the plate when it's like this because there's like curves on it. And sometimes people just want to like be able to cut around the plate and keep the, the center part for various things. Like if you wanted to do a piece like this, you wanted to have more control over like some of these, some of these pieces, you want to be able to cut it better than just randomly. The same with a piece like this. It looks like somebody just like took the plate, broke it in pieces, and then reassembled it. So um, these pieces are already cut. I'm going to just show you a very simple process for doing that, and then I'll show you a combination of cuts real fast to, you know, to, to break the plate. Um, these are tools that are available at Home Depot. They're um, very heavy-duty tile nippers and they'll do just the trick for what you want to do here. You place it on the side, it just with maybe a quarter of an inch or three eighths of an inch overlap on the side of your, of let's say a plate that you've already broken and press down, squeeze the nippers and voila, it goes right across in a straight line, which really is quite nice. Then let's say you wanted to take this piece because it has that curve and be able to like utilize it better because you can't just like put this right on like that. You need to cut it into smaller pieces. So you would take it down below here where there's like a, a section below the, the lip of the, of the bowl. And again, take the nippers on the side, squeeze together and voila. It cuts a line straight across. It's basically just looking at where you're putting these. If you put them in a good spot, in other words, if you just put it straight and you look at it and squeeze, you'll be able to like keep cutting it into smaller and smaller pieces. Now here, again, you have this, this lip shape here, so you want to take that off so that you can utilize it as a flat piece. So it's a little harder to grip like this, but I would like, maybe you have to nibble it a little, so hold it and there, and then maybe a little, a little more here, but basically you have what you need here to cut, keep cutting smaller and smaller pieces, and, and these work out great as pieces for flower pots and for tables and so forth, because now you've eliminated the curve. Now let's say you have this big plate. Where do you, where do you start? Well, I have the hammer here. You could just like go like that and smash the plate, which I didn't really want to do that on camera, but part of me actually did. Um, it's really kind of fun just to get your aggression out on these plates. But if you don't want to smash the plate completely to smithereens, a good way to do it is just like put it in a big hefty bag one of those freezer bags and I am going to like just cut, um, I'm not going to like cut around the edge of the, of the thing, I'm just going to shatter it in maybe 
a few pieces by just hammering it like once, twice, whatever. Like that. Like that. Like that. Okay. Now, once you get it going like that and you have some of these bigger pieces, wow, look at this. The, the, the wonder of like using hammers sometimes is like you end up with like some really kind of cool shapes that you wouldn't have been able to do any other way. So now you take these pieces out and some of these pieces are just perfect just the way that they are. Or maybe just a little bit of cutting and you've got kind of a neat piece. Or you can cut away the white if you want. And this piece has a little bit of a curve to it as you can, as you can see. So you might want to take this down just a little bit more and find the right spot to cut it. And voila. And then if you want to be able to like take this piece out and leave you know, just the edge of the edge of the plate, well, there's a little bit of chance and luck to this, but what I generally like to do is like go with the nippers at this particular point on the plate instead of like here because wherever you actually put the nippers it's probably going to go straight across the line's going to go straight across now here on the other hand because there's already like a curve in here I'm hoping that this will go it will take us down somewhat like that I don't know for sure but we're going to try it okay so I'm going to like put the nippers here Oops, it didn't really go. Let's try again. Oh my God, how could I have figured that out that that was gonna happen? Oh, what a genius. Anyway, um, some of these things, like I said, are trial and error, but I have been doing this for a while, so I have a certain amount of experience with this trial and error to be able to predict what's gonna happen. So now you have this really kind of lovely piece here, and you can nip around it by going like this. And you can like do bite-sized pieces around, bite-sized pieces. That sounds kind of weird because you're not going to like eat these, obviously. But we do use this term in mosaic work as kind of like chipping away at the edge. Maybe you can kind of like think of it in sort of a more of a symbolic way, chipping away at your life a little bit at a time. And voila, you have kind of like this fan shape with a tree in it that could be used in the center of a, of a table or whatever. Or if you have like a larger pot, you could actually put it, put it on the pot. But you can't put it on a smaller pot because it won't, won't fit around the curve. But you could cut it into smaller pieces like that and use use these pieces to go around the outside of your pot. So the same thing can be done with these. I don't need to show you. Um, but all these pieces can be used or nipped away. If you want to go on um, eBay, you can find like pieces that are already pre-cut like this. And uh, these plates come in a variety of different colors. You go to uh, flea markets, uh, thrift stores, whatever. A lot of them are very cheap, like anywhere from $5 a piece or $10. Sometimes there's just like mismatched sets that you can find. You can go on eBay and find, and find stuff if you look under China. Um, even um, I have like, you know, just bags of stuff ready to, to use. And... Um, and that's it for today. We're just uh, having fun with cutting china and in different ways to be able to maximize your use for mosaics. Okay, so these nippers, there's also these nippers that can be used, side fighting nippers. Those also work like that. There's some heavy duty nippers that you don't really need. These are like maybe $15 at Home Depot. They're not, they're not expensive. And, um, and the old trusty hammer. Don't forget that. And I'm Karen Silton. 